Hi, how's going everyone? Welcome back to our second part of the tutorial. Let's keep modeling the objects. First of all, we start with the wall light with the mesh color. Create an icosphere, duplicate and enlarge it. So we have two icospheres. Apply the wireframe modifier to the large one. Now we have the light object and its mesh cover already. Move the light and its cover to one side of the wall and the duplicate is set to another side of the wall. Now we are going to create a couch. Create a cube as the base part of the couch. Adjust its size. Duplicate the object and resize to create an armrest on one side. Enter edit mode and adjust the height of the armrest. Once down, let's duplicate it to create the armrest for another side. Select both armrests, enter edit mode and adjust its length. Now, duplicate the base part to create the backrest for the couch. Adjust the higher for the backrest. Scale all the parts for the couch. Apply a bevel modifier to the base part of the couch and adjust the segments to make all edges smooth. Now select all the other parts of the couch holding shift key. Then select the base part at the end, then press Ctrl L to apply the modifier to all the parts. Now we are going to create a cushion for the couch. Create a cube, adjust its height. Select all edges and bevel them. Select the side view, switch on X-ray mode, then press 1 to show all the vertices. Select the bottom part of the vertices and then assign them to a vertex group. Now, let's create some loop cuts on the object on both X and Y axis as well as the z-axis. The more loop cut you create, the more detail you will get later, once we use the claw simulation on this object. Now, let's switch on the claw simulation for this object Set the pressure to 5. Under the shape section, set the paint group to the vertex group we've created it before. Now, we can press the play button on the timeline to start the claw simulation. It appears the pressure could be a little bit higher. Let's adjust the pressure to 10 and then restart the claw simulation by going back to frame 1 and hit the play button again. Now the cushion looks pretty good. Go to the modifier section, apply the colossal modifier to the object, then add in subdivision surface modifier and adjust the level to make the cushion more smooth. We can now put a cushion on the base of the couch. Duplicate it and rotate it to make the backrest cushion. Adjust its position using the side view. Then adjust the shape for the backrest to align with the backrest cushion. Now, we can select all the parts for the couch, holding shift key. Select the base part at the end, then link all the objects. So we can move the whole couch by moving the base part only. It's time to adjust the size of the couch and then move it to the corner of the room.
Looks like the armrest could be a little bit higher. Let's select them, enter the edit mode and adjust its height. Next, let's create a storage shelf. Start with a plane, adjust its size to a rectangle, and move to the corner of the garage next to the garage door. Scale the plane, enter add mode, and create loop cuts on both X and Y axis to divide the plane into a number of small squares. Select all the faces. In the face menu, select poke faces. Then, select twice to quotes. Back to object mode and apply a wireframe modifier to the object. Now, we have one metal mesh shelf created. Next, we make the shelf pulse by creating a cube and adjust its size. Move it to the corner of the shelf, then enter edit mode, create four loop cuts on the z-axis, then select all the side faces Insert them individually by press all key twice. Delete the insert face. Select the shelf object and apply the wireframe modifier. Then select the post object and apply a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. Adjust its position, then apply a mirror modifier to it. Select the shelf as a mirror object. Activate the mirror on both X and the Y axis. Then apply all the existing modifier to the post object and join the post object and the shelf object together. Then adjust its position Place it on the ground and then give it an array modifier and then repeat it five times on the Z axis to make the whole shelf. Next, we'll create the containers. Create a cube and adjust its size. Enter the edit mode, select the top face and adjust its size. Create one loop cut on the Z axis and create two loop cuts on the Y axis. Then, select these two faces and insert them by press I. Delete the insert face. Select the three faces on the top and dissolve them into one. Select it and extrude up. Delete the top face and flip it 180 degrees. Then move it up. This will be the lead for the container. Apply a bevel modifier to the container to make the edges smooth. Then copy the modifier to the lead. Add some detail to the lead. Now let's duplicate and place the containers on the shelf.
adjust container size and then move it to the bottom shelf. Duplicate it to make a two on the bottom shelf. Duplicate another one and then rotate 90 degree on that axis and then duplicate four of them on this upper shelf. Keep duplicating to fill the shelf. Next object we are going to create is a toolbox. Create a cube and adjust its size. Enter edit mode and create one loop cut to divide the toolbox into two vertically. Then Create one loop cut on the top half to divide the top half into two parts again. Then, create two loop cuts on the top quarter. Now, we have five different size drawer for the two box. Extrude the top face and inset it. Then, extrude down to make the top platform for the two box. Select the four loop cuts. Bevel them to make the gap in between drawers. Select the front faces of the drawers. Duplicate and extrude. Then, create one loop cut on each part. Make the top part about the same size. This will be the handles for the drawers. Select the handle part of the drawers. Extrude them out a little bit. Then, Select the bottom edge of each drawer, move them out. Now, let's create the wheels for the toolbox. Create a cylinder, rotate it, and adjust the size. Select these two faces, and inset the inset again. Select these faces, duplicate, then press P to make these duplicated faces a separated object. Enlarge it a little bit, then select the top faces, scale them on the z-axis with value 0. This will level these faces to make them flat. Select these two faces, insert and extrude. Select these two circles on the wheel, Bevel them, then select the extrude along normals to create some details on the wheel. Now, select these two edges on the wheel, then bevel to make the wheel smooth. Place this wheel to the bottom of the two box, then duplicate another three sets of the wheels. Select all wheels, then select the two box while holding the shift key to link them together. Now, we can resize the two box and place it to the position. Now, let's create some wrenches. Create a cylinder, resize, Then, create a cube, resize it too.
create a loop call on the cube. Move this edge to change the shape of the cube. Use a boolean tool to cut the cube shape out of the cylinder to make the wrench head shape. Duplicate this wrench head, resize and rotate it. Then create a new cube and resize to make the wrench handle. Insert these faces and extrude to make the detail on the handle. Apply a bevel modifier to the handle to make it smooth. Then, join the two wrench heads and the handle into one object. Place a wrench on the two boxes top platform, then duplicate a few more wrenches with different sizes. Thank you all for joining me in this tutorial series. I hope you have gained valuable knowledge and skills to enhance your modeling in Blender. In the next video, we will explore more object modeling. See you in the next video.